William, I just hate when it's cold and gray. Judy, but there's so much to see and smell in the late winter garden. You are so right. And we'll tell you more next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time, and we're at Lansu Chinese Garden in downtown Portland, where it is just looking beautiful this time of year. And later in the show, we'll be talking about five beautiful plants, including this Daphne. And also on the show today, we are going to show you how to start your vegetable seeds. But coming up first, the queen of the garden, hellebores. Well, it is a delight to be here at Portland Nursery on Stark Street, and I'm with Susie Hancock, and we are going to be talking about really what, what, you know, to me is like the queen of flowers, especially in the winter, the hellebores. So mm -hmm. let's just jump right in and discuss them. We were talking before, what more could you want in a flower? Evergreen, deer resistant, right. and blooms at the gloomiest time of year. Right. So everything yeah. there. They, they really do give so much to a, especially a, a winter garden and they'll bloom you know from December all the way they're still blooming right now because these you actually picked from your garden. Out of my garden you? this morning yes. So let's go about how we what is the best way to actually plant them and grow them and what kind of maintenance do they need? Let's discuss all that. They really aren't fussy at all. They really don't need much in the way of soil, except to be well drained, of course. Right. Um, they can go into full shade, but they need a little bit more sun to bloom well. So morning sun, afternoon shade is perfect for them or dappled shade during the day. And you know, we've heard a lot of people discuss about about cleaning them up in the fall. Tell me about what that means. It's always good this time of year, or bef actually before they start to flower, to cut the old leaves off. Um, what that does is a couple of things. One, um, it showcases the flowers more so that you don't have the leaves over top of the flowers right. and they really pop in the garden. But it also, I think, gives more air around the plants for the new seedlings because they will um, seed themselves around. Right. Within a short amount of time, a few years, you can have an entire area of hellebores. And if you have a good you know, gardening soil, do you, do you do a lot of fertilizing of them? They really don't require a lot of fertilizer. Maybe an organic fertilizer put down late winter, early spring, you know, just about the time that they're flowering would be sufficient. And you know, you and I have been in this industry a long time, Susie, and we have seen such a change. So let's talk about some of these beauties hmm. down here about the differences now. In the beginning with hellebores, you really just had a few kind of purpley colors and yeah. stuff. And they've been doing more and more hybridizing. They're hybridized for um, leaf color. They've got some beautiful love that. variegated yeah. leaves now, but also for larger flowers and more upright facing flowers. One of the um, main complaints about people were, well, I can't see the flower because right. it's facing <laughs> down. Well, now they're starting to hybridize so that they're facing out and facing up at you. And they've done a lot too with, in fact, you have one here mm -hmm. of these uh, doubles, the doubles, which mm -hmm. are just stunning themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the doubles are one of the ones that really don't receive themselves a lot for me, but the right. rest of them you can depend on it once they're established, having lots more to share. And I'm going to assume that you guys, as you've always done, have a great selection of hellebores at both stores. We're we're plant nuts <laughs> and we have to have them all ourselves so yes we we do um, try to bring in all the different varieties that we can get hold of and there's a lot of fresh new colors like there's some reds that are really mm -hmm. becoming quite stunning mm -hmm. they're getting more and more into the into the reddish tones and then um and the collarettes too i'm sorry and uh, that's fine mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i love the collarettes that's mm -hmm. just they're, they're just so adorable mm -hmm. Now, also, this is, this is a fine time of year to plant them, isn't it? It really is. You know, you just want to be careful that you don't pack your soil too much if it's very wet like it is right now. But and, and should we get a bad freeze, we don't want to dig in frozen ground to Correct. plant anything, really. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's something we'd pay attention to. Mm -hmm. But you guys have a great selection currently, right? Mm -hmm. This is the time, I think, to get them. Because if you don't know individual variety names, right. um, pick them out while they're in flower. Yeah, and that's always good and with any, anything that blooms. It's yes. nice to see the color in, in real time. Yes. So, you know, always at Portland Nursery, you can find something I'm sure that you're going to want for your garden. If hellebores are the thing that you desire, come on out this weekend and look at all their wonderful plants and have a great time buying hellebores for your own garden. Thank you, Susie. Thank you.
Well, certainly we all know that spring is arriving here in our area, and yet sometimes we're really itching to get some beautiful color and blooms inside right now. So we're going to give you a couple of ideas on how you can do that with certain trees and shrubs. William, we went out to the garden and found these beautiful branches. They're flowering cherries, flowering plums. We have some fourth scythia and also some flowering quince, which really help to brighten up this room. They really do. Now, we want to give you a couple of tips when you do this. When you go out to the garden, uh, you can certainly just prune them off at any shape, and then you can take a hammer, and all you do is just gently kind of tap them a couple of times. And what that does is allow them to take up water a bit faster so that they can open up quicker. And on this forsythia, there's another technique where you take sharp pruners and you actually just kind of shear that bottom instead of smashing it. And that opens up the stem to take up more water. And when you do choose, you want to find some that are already kind of starting to swell. It really helps them when you get them in the water to pop in your home. Yeah, between the water and the uh, temperature of the house, they really open up and that will have you bring in a beautiful set of blooms a little early into your house. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, where spring is our favorite time of year. It's the time to prepare your garden for planting. We invite you to get a jump on spring with our huge selection. Let Portland Nursery's staff of professionals help with groceries you can grow. We've got the seeds, veggie starts, and expertise to ensure your success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of classes and special events. Portland Nursery, helping make your backyard your favorite destination at 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Prevent insect damage on all your trees and shrubs, even those taller plants. Annual Tree and Shrub Insect Control works from the inside out with one easy application and will leave your plants pest-free for up to one year. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. So as each new season comes around the corner to us, we have to start thinking about things that are happening in that season. Today we're going to be talking about seed starting because we all want to get that jump on our vegetable gardens. So a couple things to remember when you're growing seeds. You can certainly just, if you've saved these like four inch pots from previous uh, seasons in your garden, you can certainly just wash them out. Make, make sure you wash them out good, but you can wash them out and use them. But there's also a whole host of different type of compartmentalized seed starting things. You can buy at independent garden centers. So once you decide how you want to grow the seeds and what container you're going to use them in, the next really important step is what kind of soil. Uh, we really like the black gold seedling mix. We know it's clean and we know that it's really made well and it's ready for seed starting. Now you might say to yourself, hey, I'm just going to go grab some garden soil because that's really nutritious. It is if you've composted well, but then also remember outside there can be all kinds of disease in it, there can be insects, there can be things that would really attack those young fresh seedlings before they even get started, so you really don't want to do that. Now, once you get this going, you might also think about a dome or a cover. Now you can get those, we have chosen not to do that, but you can certainly put a dome on them to help maintain the moisture. Also with seed starting mix, it's often very dry, but we've already pre-moistened this a little bit 
because you do not want to put fresh started seeds in really dry soil and then try to make them moist. That just doesn't work. It's also good to choose really good seed, you know, and make sure that it's packaged for this year. And you can find all that information right on the packages. We chose Renee Garden Seeds and also Nickel Garden Nursery Seeds. And Nichols is a company right here in Oregon. You'll find all the information you need right on the front of the package or Renee's is all on the back. You'll find out how long it takes for the germination of the seed, um, how far apart you wanna put them in the garden, and also how long it'll take before you can harvest the fruit. So we chose to use cucumber seed. Now all seeds are gonna be different size. Cucumber seeds are pretty big, so we wanted to be able to show you. So we're gonna put one of these seeds inside one of the cells, and we're gonna take just a regular pencil to make a hole, and then just drop the seed in there, cover it up, and then we're gonna just make sure that we add some moisture just so that soil is nice and moist to help the seed germinate. Another great tip is to mark what you plant. Don't rely on your memory. Use some kind of a stake, mark what kind of vegetable it is and the date, that's really important, and then put it right in the soil. Now that you have all your plants planted and you have a mark, don't forget to maintain great moisture with the seedlings. You can't let these seeds dry out for even a minute or you have to start all over again. Two other things that you really do need to pay some attention to is both the light and the heat. Seeds tend to want a lot of consistency in that, so you have to find a southern or a western window so you get plenty of light. Now remember, if you have a bunch of big trees or a two-story house next to you that blocks the light, that's really not light. So if you don't have that kind of light, you can always get all different kinds of lighting systems that would work anywhere in your house. As far as the heating goes, you know, it, most of us keep a house about 70 degrees. That will be fine if it's maintained at that. But if you're dropping down to the low 60s, you can always get a, a heating pad. Many garden centers carry them, and that will help you keep a truly consistent heat until those seedlings take start. So now it's time to think of the last step. It's been a couple weeks now and your plants are actually starting to grow. You want to wait until the leaves have a second set of leaves on the stem. Then you know that the plants are really coming along and they're going to be old enough to get out into the garden. You also want to pick up the little tray packs and see if you see little white roots coming out from the tray pack. As you can see, there's no roots starting out and so we know that these are not ready to go outside. It's also a little bit chilly to go outside yet, so you want to check with your seed packages to see when they recommend that the seedlings go outside or go to the OSU website to see when they recommend the transplants be put out in the garden for the season. So now if this went a little too fast for you, remember you can always go to gardentime.tv where we have all kinds of information on you starting your own seeds for your garden. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Owl's Garden and Home. Create an inviting gathering place with a new patio furniture collection. Our beautiful furniture transforms any outdoor space, large or small. It's like having an extra room outdoors. Then add impact with colorful pottery. Hundreds of unique designs and sizes all on sale now. Owl's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and Wilsonville. Your garden is only as good as the ingredients you use. That's where Black Gold can help. Black Gold Seedling Mix is formulated for successful seed germination and strong seedling growth. Black Gold Seedling Mix is organic and OMRI listed, so you can start this year's organic garden outright. Look for Black Gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Why do the finest builders shop at Standard TV and Appliance? It's pretty easy to put Standard in their shoulder to shoulder with us. They are awesome when it comes to service. The products are really incredible that they carry. We really enjoy the interaction with all of the staff, from the sales to the delivery. They really stand behind what they sell. Standard can make your dream kitchen a reality. Setting the standard since 1947. Standard TV and Appliance. It's a beautiful morning to be at Lansu Chinese Garden and I'm with Justin and Justin, it's just amazing to come out to the garden and there's really some plants in bloom even at this time of year. Yeah, it's surprising to see some of our plants in bloom as early as uh, February, March, but we've had some really cold weather. Um, 
but uh, it's not unusual for our climate to have uh, plants such as Edgeworthia and Camellia in bloom this early. Uh, and there is a beautiful Edgeworthia right behind us. So tell us about that plant. Uh, so this is Edgeworthia chrysantha, a species also known as Papyrifera. Uh, it's been cultivated in Chinese gardens for uh, over a thousand wow. years, um, not only because of its a wonderful fragrance, mm. it's related to the Daphne, but uh, also the stems and the bark are used for uh, paper. Ah, and in our own gardens, where would we site it? Um, I would site it in a fairly protected spot, part shade to part sun. They do like a little bit of sun, but not in a full sun situation. Ah, just beautiful. And I know there are some other blooming plants in the garden, so let's go over there. All right. So Justin, walking over, over to this area, we pass the pond and it's kind of iced over, but then there's plants blooming. So kind of explain that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as you know, it, it, we can have like temperatures down into the 20s, but in the Northwest, you will still see bloom on our, on our winter blooming and spring blooming plants. And I think too, uh, having them in a sort of a protected mm -hmm. spot is, is uh, usually a good idea for some of the winter blooming plants. Um, and uh, like this Daphne, for instance. Wow. Daphne Adora Ario Marginata. Uh, and uh, it's, it's in a fairly protected spot. It gets mm -hmm. a, a nice uh, deal of sun, but it's also protected by this tall uh, pine on one side of us and by the, uh, the garden wall on the other. Um, so they usually sail through pretty well in the, our cold weather. If you have like a, a young Daphne though, like that you've just planted say in the fall, it is a good idea to, to wrap a little bit of frost cloth around it to protect it oh, good idea. because younger plants typically could succumb to this kind of weather. Ah, oh, true, true. And then right across the pathway, there's some um, flowering quince in two colors, actually. Yes, uh, so we have uh, flowering quince, it's Canomales japonica contorta, which is blooming kind of a whitish pink right now. And uh, also um, uh, Canomales japonica atsuya hamada. And uh, that has a nice, deep, dark, almost like wine red flower color. Beautiful. And those will take a little bit more sun? Those are going to take a little bit more sun. And those are really good uh, in uh, you know, the cut stems for flower oh, arranging. And uh, you see them depicted in uh, Chinese art going back hundreds of years. So they're uh, a favorite for, uh, for the Chinese as well. And they, uh, they also represent uh, the new year and the spring to oh, come. Oh, very so. nice. And there's some more plants. We're just going to go to one more space. So let's go over there. All right. Well, now we're in the Scholar's Courtyard with so many beautiful blooming plants. And before we talk about this camellia, let's talk about the plums. Uh, so the plums are actually one of my favorite plants of all time. Beautiful. And these are Prunus mume, which is known as a Chinese plum. However, they're more technically an apricot. Oh. <laughs> uh, but they, uh, they will bloom as early as December wow. some years. Uh, ours started blooming in uh, January and they'll be blooming all the way through uh, March. And they're one of the most important plants in Chinese culture, wow. actually. So they, they represent uh, some of our uh, best qualities as humans, such as integrity, longevity. And they also are the harbinger of, of Chinese New Year bringing in uh, 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 the spring. Ah, and yeah. they're mirrored right into the uh, walkways here. There's plums into the into the rocks. That's right. So the the plum blossoms is what this represents. Is they they fall onto the ice and crack oh. it, oh. Uh, meaning that 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 winter is coming to a close. Yay. And so there's there's hope for warmer <laughs> weather. <laughs> and then what about this camellia? It's in full bloom right now. Yeah, this is an incredible camellia. This is Camellia japonica. The uh, varietal is a uh, drama girl. <laughs> and this also has been in bloom for a while. Uh, and the nice thing about camellias is that they will bloom for a long period of time. So even if your camellia has started to bloom in February or March, it could uh, run as far as April or May even in some instances. Wow. So if it hasn't quite opened up yet, which in some areas of Portland, uh, the Portland area, they're yet to open, uh, just give it a, a week or two and you'll start to see those emerge. Ah. But they are uh, one of the most just dramatic flowering plants. Very much, very much. And you are really highlighting them in just a few short weeks. Yes, that's right. So we every year we have a camellia uh, flower display and uh, at the end of March. And um, yeah, and so we'll be highlighting many varieties of, of camellias and they come in the form of, 
of stems and flowers and we do a, a, an arrangement in, oh, in some nice. of our halls here. Ah, and then in April there's something else going on. In April we're having something unique, it's called a Scholar's Rock Exhibit. And uh, Scholar's Rocks is what they are, are uh, small rocks uh, that are usually about a foot tall that are naturally occurring. But they're, they create, uh, they carve uh, wood pedestals for these rocks and that uh, the, the scholars, the literati back in the Ming Dynasty would use as inspiration oh. uh, for uh, poetry or, or calligraphy or, or uh, many of the Chinese arts. Wow, wow. Yeah. You know, there's something always interesting going on here and something always in bloom. So if nothing is blooming out quite by your house, it's wonderful to come down to Lansu and see all the beauty down here. Just go to the website and you can find out all the information about what's going on down here. Thanks so much, Justin. It's lovely. Thank you, Judy. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. I've been a Capital Subaru customer for 15 years and one of the main reasons is because they treat me well and I want to shop local. The service department is excellent and I always feel like I'm taken care of here. In fact, they call me now even after I've driven off the lot to remind me to come in and get my car washed. That's service. One of the reasons why I like coming to Capital Subaru, actually, they have this, the dog area. And I can just walk my dog around the whole area and we can enjoy the outside. I got it my way on the parkway. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. For over 100 years, Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Well, I am at the Rogerson Clematis Garden at Lusher Farm in Lake Oswego, and we're going to be talking about fruit trees, not clematis this time, but about fruit trees and about how to um, take care of them after the pruning. And I'm with Ray from Bartlett Tree Experts. And so this time of year, what should we be doing to our fruit trees? Okay, uh, the main thing is the, is the timing of the treatments for the trees, because if you wait until you get to see the disease or see the pests, you're too late. You've got to stay, you prevent it, you've got to stay one step ahead of it. So what we're doing is we're basically looking, looking at the buds. And right now, you know, they haven't started growing yet, but this is a good time to get like a, actually a late dormant spray on just before they start to grow. Because what happens sometimes we get so much rain, mm. we can't spray in the rain. So it's better just to kind of spray, clean up the fungus, the, the pathogens on the tree now. And that way when the new buds come out, they'll get immediately attacked. And so that's really for fun, fungicide and for um, insect control too? Um, in the springtime, we're just going for the disease first. Okay. The insects don't show up till later, okay. until about May. So basically from February and through, through May, when we got the, the, wet, the wet rainy months there, that's when we got to do like a, at least a monthly spray to stay one step ahead of, as the new growth comes out to spray it, just keep that fungus off of there. And so we do really have to be careful once the buds break, the flower buds, we don't want to be spraying if there's pollinators. Yeah, you can't spray um, fungicide. You know, those are safe, but yeah, mm -hmm. any insecticides, even some of the safer ones, you still got to be careful. It's better just wait till after they're done blooming because you don't have fruit yet out anyway. Right. And, and uh, yeah, especially for the bees because it's we use a very safe thing. It's called a spinosad. It's basically it's it's derived from a beneficial bacteria, so it's just kind of dangerous when it's wet. But for people, it's totally non-toxic. But it works very well for controlling the the, the apple maggot and the codling moth. Uh, but you have other things to help with that kind of an insect, and you have some um, little devices here that will help deter codling, ma codling moth and apple maggot. Yeah, so this is a codling moth trap, and what, what it is, it's just inside, we've got some sticky paper, and there's a little pheromone uh, we put in there, a little female pheromone. Basically, 
Uh, this helps a little bit with, with the control, but mostly it's for monitoring. Okay. So if we start seeing those in there, we know we need to spray, but what we're trying to do is just stay one tip ahead of it. So we put these out in May, and that way, we can, usually what they do, the collie moss shows up right after the, right when the trees are blooming, they'll, they'll start becoming active, and that's when we want to get them before they start laying the eggs on the fruit. Uh, and so the pheromone really works and it kind of disrupts their patterns. It yes. kind of broadcasts. It's really fascinating the way that works. Yeah, this is what, one thing we found. This is what the commercial uh, growers use and we've been using them now too for several years and they work really well. This is a pheromone tie. We put this on the tree and that doesn't look like much, but this is enough, that puts out enough pheromone, basically kind of puts a cloud of pheromone around the tree that when the males come to try to find the female, they just, they're lost. And if they can't <laughs> fight each other, they can't, you know, mate and lay eggs. So ah. it does very well to help control the colony moth. It totally disrupts the cycle. Exactly. Ah. It, unfortunately, these aren't available at retail, but we can get hold of those. Oh, okay. And then what is this yellow one behind us? Yeah, so the, after that, usually more into June, we get apple, apple maggots. They're the ones that come out, and they're more of a fruit fly. Colony moth, they'll... Uh, They'll lay their eggs and you know, they'll, they'll get all black down the core where these kind of get in the flesh of the apple. You know, so you've got two different pests you've got to worry about. So this one, just basically yellow trap and this is like a little ammonia around here and this actually draws in a lot of flies so that'll help uh, control the, some control on those. Basically we'll hang one of those in the of the tree where the collie moth trap, we just do like one or two per orchard just for monitoring. Oh wow. But that, this combination of traps along with the spray between the two of them, if we do the right timing, that's how we get good control. And the last thing too is just is culture. Uh, the biggest thing is the is the fruit that rotten fruit that comes in the ground. If they just leave that, that's where they overwinter and they come back next year. Mm. So if they just good sanitation, that's huge as far as controlling those pests. Really, it's all a total thing. You want to make sure you prune correctly to get that air circulation and light getting in, and then also making sure that you're taking care of it on an ongoing basis. Yeah, and it's all about timing. You have to stay one step ahead of it. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's so much information, and if you want to have the tree experts come out to your place, please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the Bartlett website, and Ray and his guys can come out and have your trees taken care of, and you have wonderful fruit harvest. Thanks so much, Ray. Great, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching Garden Time today, and we also wanted to say a big thank you to Lan Su, which is beautiful whatever time of year you come to see it. And you know, spring is a couple more weeks away, but there is a spring event that you can do this weekend. Don't forget to set your clocks ahead one hour. <laughs> so for more information on today's show, as always, we invite you to go to gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. One thousand one hundred and twelve? One thousand one hundred thirteen? William, what are you counting? I'm counting all of our wonderful friends on Facebook. And we invite everyone to go to Facebook and like us and follow us. All you have to do is go to Gardentime.tv and hit the Facebook icon which is in the top right hand corner. It's the best place to get the most updated information on Garden Time. So all you have to do is click us and like us. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.